Did you guys sell your crypto or shares? <laughs> Some of the decisions he's been making, you tend to trust in him to make the right call. What I can ask from Nalaka is, I mean, if not him, who? Welcome to Sri Lankan Cricket Podcast. My name is Vida and I'm joined by my co-host Sohan. How are you going, Bora? Doing good, Vida. Been following the Aussie Open because my girls love tennis. Um, oh, yeah. Ash Party got the win, so pretty good uh, atmosphere over here. Weather-wise, cricket, we couldn't get on this week, but I mean seasons in place that should be all right um getting back into the program um what have we got lined up today with us well we got news about sri lanka's new coach but just like news from sri lanka he has reversed his decision so paul fabre says no to sri lanka coaching job and yeah. uh, they have announced a squad for t20 series against australia plus it malinga has brought in as a bowling consultant for that series uh sri lanka under 19 lost their quarter final game to Afghanistan. It was a heartbreaking loss for our junior Lions and the uh, Sri Lanka women's team qualifies for Commonwealth Games 2022 in Birmingham, England. And if you go to domestic cricket, National Cricket League uh, has started and they've played a few games and we have some news about that as well. Let's start with the news about our coach, Bora. So they've announced Paul Pabre's as the head coach of Sri Lanka and Navid Nawaz as the assistant and after a couple of days what progress has come out and said he's gonna stay with Warwickshire so once again the hunt for a head coach position <laughs> for Sri Lanka cricket uh, it's still on yeah we don't have rock solid news on um, who's getting the job Sri Lanka cricket at the moment are trying to offer the head coach position to um, candidates they feel um, could add value Um, shortlisted candidates look to be out of the window. Navid Nawaz was one candidate but wasn't given the head position. Few of the other guys have pulled out and also have found out other jobs as the time has gone on. I think the whole process is taking longer. So it's interesting. It's almost a position that no one wants to be part of. <laughs> Amongst the international uh, circuits, I think it's the uncertainty around the role. A lot of coaches have left with, you know, sour grapes, uh, legal cases, mm. uh, whatnot. Um, even though we've got a, you know, stronger committee um, where the guys could fall on, still there is that bit of uncertainty. Um, so we are still looking for a coach. Paul Fabres, I'm not, wasn't surprised when they said, look, he might be taking all the old role because he's worked a lot with... Yes. Um, the technical committee of your Mahela Sangha, um, even uh, to a certain extent, the Tom Moody's, uh, Murali's. Yeah. So when his name came forward, I thought, okay, there's been that relationship. Uh, we've won a T20 under him, his wing. Yep. He was in charge of that team. So it looked good news. I mean, as a guy who's returning, who knows the setup and he's, you know, who work mm. around, he's, he's, I think, also a good people manager. Um, but things... Wasn't surprised when he said, no, I'm not taking that job on. I'll be sticking with uh, my current setup. So um, the hunt is still on. Yeah, no, you're right. Apparently, he hasn't applied for this job. So yep. um, the committee has approached him with the job. He must have said yes. And the, my suspicion is because there's uncertainty about England coach uh, Chris Hillwood's future. Maybe he has that in back of his mind. Uh, as well so maybe that's why he reversed his decision but in this series against australia it's uh, rumesh ratnaka will be our interim coach again and um, he had a good series against zimbabwe as i said earlier lasit malinga roped in as a consult- bowling consultant yeah it's a good thing um makes sense to make use of you know the world's best t20 bowler and his um insights into the game he's um on social media we he- has a youtube channel as well it talks about insights of how you know setting up bowling plans um, what we could do differently so that's mm-hmm. going to rub off in the dressing room having him in that camp he could add value um he's i mean he was here a couple of months back um so he probably can extend his stay and work with the 
team coming back into the coaching national setup or the head coach um i know we are chasing after or trying to um shortlist candidates or yeah candidates for the role throughout our history we've always had coaches assistant coaches fielding coaches come up the ranks and hold roles you know so mm. when you think about that i don't see the logic of an avid navas just being appointed assistant coach but not getting the ranks of being able to run a team that also just uh, takes the shine of i would have i mean if you're going ahead you, i mean everyone's got a probation period you work with the person head into a role and you know see if it's a role that works for them so um but still romesh ratnayaka the king of interim coaching <laughs> uh, takes over another series so he'll be i mean he he'll, he knows the setup so he'll control what he can control within his own capability and the boys will be here for a good series which i mean it's a good preparation because the t20 world cup follows yeah. after that and then playing in australia so it's um australia has put up their team out it's a strong squad that they put on so they are planning ahead with the 2020 world uh, 2022 world cup um yeah. so uh, it will be a good good series it will be yeah. a big learning curve for the boys but a lot of the boys have toured here um as youngsters few of those mm. guys have come here um over the period so now it's they've got to make use of that skills um and compete with the top team it's a season team coming of some of the players are off the big bash league some have been just serious t20 players yeah. of the t20 world cup that they just won yeah that's the way i see it lasit maling is a good addition to this setup yeah yeah just to wrap up uh, about the coach uh, position bora i mean we have few a few options <laughs> to pick from now um two names in the running are uh, Grant Bradburn of New Zealand and uh, Simon Helmet from Australia so those are the two names that has come up as the front runners i think sri lanka cricket or oh, the committee has approached graham ford as well but he has uh, refused the offer citing personal reasons it should come out sooner rather than later because it's been a while now it is getting uh, yeah. it's silly now <laughs> it's getting and if i'm a, like if you are applicant and you apply for the role and they still can't fulfill the role um like those two person names you said who are still shortlisted i5 or one of them it just it seems less appealing as time goes by exactly so you advertise for a role let's say 2 3 months back and we still can't fill the role it doesn't appeal it's like what's going on there's uncertainty then the applicants like they get less attracted to the role you know yeah. the more you drag means there's no conscious decisions what they need to do what they want to go ahead it's yeah. almost like yes none of these applicants meet the expectations of what we want we are now going to approach players which the coaches which they are trying to do but they need to approach them really quick and mm. be count offering now the offers from a coaching point of view is going to go up so monetary values are going to go up now so yeah. um is that an expense where sri lanka cricket can take on board we'll we'll find out as time goes on we know some of the coaches who were before they were on some good you know good yeah. uh, annual returns in terms of a coaching salary so yeah that's the way i see it and mm. they go local you know some of the local coaches queries are what's the pay um, um difference between yeah. overseas applicant to a local applicant that question is going is going to pop back on so those are questions mm. that needs to be answered really fast um and also the role to be filled because we can't stop the rain train moving along isn't it yeah no yeah you're right like um if you look at this matter from the players perspective bora you know they must be they must be wondering what's going on as well because there's um there's an india tour coming up which is a very important one and uh, australia yeah. coming to sri lanka so these are important tours and um we have to be ready i think to sum it up at the moment we are using mahela as an insurance and that insurance we can't be having it always as a backup to run through you know it'll get us off he was insurance at the t20 um yeah. with his advisory his insurance at the under 19 world cup which is good because he adds a lot of value at that level for the coaches to develop 
Yeah. But that insurance is not rubbing off from international um, coaching setup for, for the mm-hmm. players to settle into, learning to play a method of cricket under one leader or one coach, you know, um, yeah. uh, heading like this is how we want to play the game. Yeah, yeah. Now you're right. Um, let's move on to the squad news uh, for Australia series. Bora. They We've yeah. talked about they might bring a bigger squad. So... They're bringing 20 players because we're playing mm. five, five T20s. Captain is Dasun Shanaka. I'll go through the names. Asalanka, Avishka Fernando, Patum, Dishanka, Danushka Gunatilaka, Kusal Mendis. They are both back in the team. Chandimal, Chamika, Janit Lienege. He had a good LPL and he missed yep. out because he <laughs> contracted COVID when he got, he got selected to play against Zimbabwe. So he's back in the team. Kamil Mishara, young wicketkeeper batsman. Ramesh Mendis. Vanidu Asaranga, number one T20 bowler. He had a good rest. Um, he didn't play in the Zimbabwe series. So looking forward to see him bowl in Australia. Lahir Kumara, he's back in the team. Nuan Tushara, the slinger from goal. He had a good LPL as well. Dushmanta Chamira, Binura Fernando, Mahesh Tikshana. Vandese after a good series against Zimbabwe, his comeback series. And uh, Pravin Jayavikrama, left arm spinner. So it's a balanced squad, isn't it, Pura? Young, but it's a balanced um, squad. It's a big squad. Um, I think uh, a good crew. Um, over playing here, not a lot of sides been on offer, so you good yeah. through wickets through. So you got to be hitting those hard lengths as fast bowlers and as spinners. Try to extract extract a um, lot of spin, or you know subtle variations. So you got to beat players um, off the through the speed in there. That's where Rashid Khan has been a big success factor mm. here. Um, <clears throat> those are the things that you know one do um, would need to bounce off really quickly learn the speed yeah. of the same for Jeffrey Vandersey as well Praveen Jayavikrama is a good addition but then it's a, it's almost a series that uh, there'll be a strong focus on wrist spin um, yes and if Praveen was more but I guess with Vanidu now in the batting mix uh, he's a strong batsman might uh, love that you know uh, finger spinner on to it, but on on if Vanidu is playing, he'll bat probably six seven. Yeah. Um, Charmika eight likely yeah. in the yeah. order, and then the three bowlers that will be Dushman Talahiru and Praveen Jayavikrama or Ramesh or maybe Binura. Or, Jeffrey, or Binura. Mm-hmm. There you go. So that will be the mix 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 that we have and they're going to come across some good batters um there's a good guy um good set of batters that are pushing um, we've mm. seen australia bank on a few batters to take the middle to the back end which is your matthew wade stoinis um yeah and the guys after that to follow like in terms of power hitting um so how we deal with that um batters is a question so that might be the tipping point for us to get some wins here. Mm. No, you're right. Um, uh, the point you talk about playing two spinners, Bora, it's coming towards the end of the season here in Australia. So the pitches yeah. have been used for a few months now. So especially in Sydney, you get a bit of turn um, on that pitch. So yeah. it is maybe it's wise to play two spinners. I think the mix uh, of team or the 11 that you'll have with that is it looks pretty straightforward. You'll have Dushmanta Chamira, Lahiru Kumar, or Nuan Tushara. Um, mm. You've got um, Chamika as the, you know, the third seamer. Yeah. Mahesh Tikshana and Vanidu Hasarang as the spinners. That will be the five main players. Probably the ins and outs would be a Lahiru Kumara or a Nuan Tushara in or um, even a Binura Fernando fighting for one spot. Um, yeah. And yeah, from there, at least the first few games and then whatever adjustments they do. Um, with the batting, interesting point would be now that Kusal Mendes has found his way back into the level um, in T20. Does it mean he opens? We've seen him open in the 50 over um, setup. Mm. If he opens, does that mean Avishka goes? I mean, does Avishka drop into his number customary number four position? Um, Danushka, Kusal, um, Patum Nisanka fighting for that top three. And then, yeah, you have Asalanka, um, Asalanka at that number five. 
he's the vice uh, captain for this series. He's the for vice Ajay. captain. Yeah. Good so, addition. so Dhananjay is not there and Kusal Janith is not there. Banuke is not yeah, there. Yeah, it's almost like a series if Kusal Janith wanted to, it could be a series because there's no strong all spinner again in the Australian yeah. camp as a thought. But then he's he's found he's gone down the ranks pretty quickly, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last July, he was the white ball captain. And yeah. now they're not even considering him for selection. So, But the, all the batsmen who are in this tour, Bora, they've been scoring runs. They be, they're in form. So it's a hel- good, healthy competition than for spots in that top order. Yeah, no, no, it'll be interesting series. I'm looking forward to it. From the Australian yeah. camp, um, I'm just looking at a few of the guys to make in. I mean, Finch would want to make a good um, change around. He's not at the best of form in the Big Bash mm. League. Moises Hendricks, he's found his way back in. Um, he was the Sixers captain and an all-rounder, strong domestic player. Um, and Ben McDermott, he's a good player to watch out. He's yes. got a lot of hundreds um, and he he has the capacity to bat through the middle, um, mm. which is a skill, which is a rare skill in T20 cricket because um, to ex- uh, you know accelerate to the middle. So he'll add more um, value to the likes of you know Matthew Wade, Stoinis, um, uh, Josh English. I'm not sure he'll be there as well. So those are um, few, yeah. few people to work on. Yeah, McDermott had a great uh, big bash. Uh, he scored back to back hundreds. Yeah. So they're coming off good form. So it'll be a good series. Late fee move on to Sri Lanka under 19. Wara, that was a heartbreaking game against Afghanistan. Four runouts. We did so well to get to that point and kept Afghanistan. 234. Yeah, we had a bad start. We lost four wickets for 25 or something and we rebuild to get to a position where we can win. Then, yeah, that was, they've done really well in the, the recent past, not only in the World Cup. You know, there are players in that team who's showing a lot of potential, isn't it? Yeah, good one. Heartbreak, like you're saying, to watch. I was following the game through. Um... The live updates that were flowing in. Runouts were here. Yeah, we, we were always trying to catch up in the game. We were never ahead of the game. I did, it didn't seem that way. Um, and even at the back end, I was like, and we the last we could manage to tick over singles for like uh, they hit a four as well, leading up to that run out. Um, and it, it it seemed like we'll just you know get get in. So we just fell short right at the finish line. At one stage, I was thinking the guy. Hopefully the non-strikers well inside that they don't mank it or try to get a wicket that way. Because yeah. um, I think it was I can't remember which team, but there was an instance like that happening. Um, but fell short four runouts is a that's a, it's a main reason why we lost the game as well. You probably can account for one maybe two runouts, but still that's still. And not a wicket that is forced from as a result of you know of a pitch or good bowling. It's more of a lack of communication or decision making. So um, that let us down. Um, Afghanistan, they might be you know over the moon getting this win and pushing yeah. up uh, uh, to the next round. Um, Australia still in the hunt. They're playing their semi-finals tonight. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I guess a lot of positives coming out of it. There seems to be another Lasit Malinga or mm. similar fast bowler coming through the ranks. He'll be up there. Um, Dunit, the captain, has is a is a bright prospect. I mean, with the ball, with the bat, I'd like him straight away. You know, rope in into the Sri Lankan, you know, uh, wider squad, not the direct squad, but you know, the next thirty squad of uh, group of players that we have. And yeah. get him working with the coaches. I mean, ideal scenario is if we have Sri Lanka A tours, I'll, he'll be the first player I'd pick into that squad or yeah. pick into the next three tours. Um, so that gives him, like, we know, okay, give him much coverage. We, we talked about letting players settle into roles. That'll be a perfect scenario. Mm. And then open the options of the Sri Lankan wider national, you know, exposure. It's just that I don't, there's a lot of lack of, a team tours happening, um, most A squads training. I don't know in the back end domestically, are we training differently with the A squad? But if they do, guys like these um, do needs need to be in that squad. Um, mm. You know, players talking to them about cricket, they discuss yeah. what they can 
and you know they improve as they go along now you're right take him to india you know with the test team you can do that because you can take 20 players um yeah, yeah let him share the dressing room with the senior spinners and you know he can learn a lot from uh, just by just just uh, sharing that dressing room and he'll be ready when he gets his chance yeah and sri lanka playing against south africa for the fifth place tomorrow it's just a consolation um if they win it but um so it looks like australia choked as uh, south africa choked as well they are playing for the yeah number 5 yeah. <laughs> fifth place yeah. so some things don't change do they no <laughs> oh. yeah, it's been like a like a curse for them in in icc tournament isn't it <laughs> Yeah. One bright light for Sri Lanka is Sri Lanka women cricketers are qualified for Commonwealth Games in England. They had unbeaten run in Malaysia. They beat Bangladesh in the finals and um they only they had to win it because there's only one spot available to play in that in the Commonwealth Games tournament which is a eight team tournament for a medal. The first time they're playing women's cricket in commonwealth games and we missed out qualifying for the women's cricket world cup but if you look at the uh, group <coughs> for uh, it's like a mini world cup because um, yeah. australia barbados india pakistan in group a and uh, in group b england new zealand south africa and now sri lanka so and they're playing in england so it'll be like a mini world cup so we needed uh, more games for women cricketers so they had a good run in malaysia now this is a good opportunity especially for someone like chamri atapat who she's been making runs in all for all three games he only missed out in one game in that tournament i'm looking forward to this tournament i think it's in in june july in, in english summer the girls are ticking you know playing games getting exposed learning as they go along i've seen in some of the chats how strong i mean Chamari Atapattu, I feel, I keep saying that she should be playing in a, you know, Sri Lankan domestic men's tournament as well. Yeah. I think she'll be a good batter. That's how her skill sets are matching at the moment. So we we want someone else as well to learn quickly while Chamari is playing so they're able to, you know, build something off an amazing cricketer. Yeah. Before we started to record this podcast, um, I was watching the Women's Ashes test, Bora. England nearly yeah. pulled off a win there against Australia. Uh, Meg Lanning declared asking England to chase 265 and uh, England lost nine wickets in the end. They were in the hunt in the hunt to win it and they lost their way um in the middle. England nearly you know they they haven't won a game this summer they nearly <laughs> won one. They nearly won a test in Australia. It was not to be. Yeah. Did you did you get a chance to watch it or no? um a little bit of it uh yeah talia magrath seems to be you know another strong uh, player coming through the ranks i mean ashes cricket is good to watch um and it yeah, i mean there's a strong following for the women's sport over here um because it's one of it's a golden era of women's cricket even for australia um oh, yes. so um they're playing an ashes series it's good to see Yeah, only play one yeah. test for us. They should be playing more test matches. It's only a four-day test, and they lost like I think about two, nearly three sessions to rain, and yeah. the test went till the last ball. So they should be playing more test matches. At least you know they're playing Ashes series. They should be playing at least three test matches. Um, with a bit of domestic cricket happening in Sri Lanka as well, the um, national super leagues, um, you know, playing its round robin games. Um, yeah. Uh, we've seen some of our local stars back playing there. Dananje De Silva's captain is side, so he's out of. Um, he's back from uh, parental leave, so he's playing yeah. games. Um, and then um, the local boys getting into their um, provinces and playing um, the games um, has. I mean, it's been. some good some good games been played out there as well um yeah and some young players put in their names up you know pu- pushing through for selection as well early st- stages yet yeah. i mean yeah. still a bit early into the round so i think if you run through some of the stats it's just um, just a couple few games in um uh, but you know no yet to see that stand out uh performance of yeah. the Fernando scored 100 uh, which was in at today's game 
Oh, right. Um, batting at number three, uh, which is good. Uh, number mm. four, which is a good sign. Generally, in Sri Lankan one-day tournaments, it's all most of the time a hundred comes off the uh, first three players, top three. So yeah. number four yeah. scoring a hundred, four or five scoring a hundred, or always I think it's a it's a big um, boost or um, addition. Um, it's almost like a hundred and fifty, which an opener scores, or if not, you know, there's a lot of value in that uh, scores. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, Santosh Kunatilaka. He was a, a former player who. Um, I think when Sri Lanka toured South Africa, he was in that test squad as a you know a new player that they got on. But then after that, he wasn't in the mix. They almost like he got um, was out of the squad. So, yeah. but he's playing his cricket uh, on all rounder. Um, plays I think he played for Coles Cricket Club. Um, so players like that are getting exposure. There'll be more players. This is one player that uh, caught my eye because I always wanted to see why where this guy was. Because oh, yeah. when you get into a squad as a new player, you know, there's something that caught the eye of a selector or a coach or someone to get him in there. Then um, after that, have you don't see him in that squad. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, I'm still trying to, the curious mystery of uh-huh. you know, what happened around that. Because South African tour was some time back. So, yeah. Um, Sahan, uh, Sahan Arachige has... Scored some runs as well. He's got an 80. And uh, Lahiru Madhusanka has taken four wickets in a game. He's coming back from injury. So good to see him mm. back and bowling well. So it's as you said, it's early stages. So we keep an eye on this tournament. Um, let's see who's going to make the most runs. And you saw Kusal Mendes make a comeback by scoring most number of runs in the LPL. So there will be opportunities for because it's a quality tournament because all the players, uh, all the yeah. fringe players are playing in this tournament. I saw Dimut, uh, Dimut Kararatna and Lahiru Tirimana. They're all playing this tournament as well. So it's uh, hopefully we'll talk yeah. more about this in the next episode. Bora. Yeah, I think it's good that Dimut Tiriman are playing there because now that when the Sri Lanka team takes its wings to Australia. There's going to be 20 players less. So yeah. you might have a yeah. crossover of, you know, not having those players in this tournament. So then it opens up an opportunity for the guys next in line. And if yeah. we want to see the depth in Sri Lanka cricket to say, okay, well, are they competing each other? Or is it, you know, it's some crazy scores being out there. This might give an early indication as to where mm. things are at, domestically, where we hear, you know. We don't have strong players. Things are not falling apart. Um, if that squad of 20 players come out, we'll have exposure and we might see those schools. Yeah, right. Yeah. And still no news about what's going to happen to the club tournament. So, don't know where they're going to pick players from. Just have to be from the past performance, isn't it? But no one is playing any other games to pick from. But it is what it is. Um, yeah. And... Uh, uh, in other news, Roshan Mahanam, who was in the Sri Lanka Cricket Te- Cricket Technical Committee, has resigned. And BPL and PSL has kicked off. Those two tournaments are also in the early stages. Some of our Sri Lankan cricketers are playing in, the, in both tournaments, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. Let's do a couple of listener questions, Bora. Unless you got yeah, any love to that. add to what we... Yeah, ours. interesting to find what some of our viewers want to say this time around or questions. I'm keen yeah. to find out. With that. I think you can start kicking the questions off. Yeah. So this is from Steve from Victoria. He Remember, Bora, he's the guy who the asked questions man. about... Yeah. <laughs> so it's a follow-up no, question. <laughs> yeah. Follow-up question. So... Um, the markets have been volatile in the last two weeks. Did you guys sell your crypto or shares? <laughs> Did you, Bora? Nah, to couldn't get to sell in them. It just went sky, not sky. It's the skyrocket <laughs> went down, so it just kept spiraling down. I think yeah. I do follow it. I think it was just um, the last time I checked, it was below the thirty. Below thirty thirty five thousand dollar mm. mark or USD mark, so it's almost do the fingers each to buy more Bitcoin and see um, if it will come around. Because everyone, they, I mean, you listen, that's the future. But then 
it's um it's a bit scary so but talking about crypto steve smith's on to nfts so need yeah. to have a chat about that be you know uh, you know players venturing out into the FD, nft market and opening that up yeah. so yeah there'll be more players in venturing in so digital currency is something to stay yeah maybe not all of them will stay but um just like the internet uh, you know the internet boom in the early 2000s the, you know the best will stay yeah. that's that's my guess but okay. you, know, you never know <laughs> and what about shares did you sell like for the last 100 days um, it's been going down it lost i mean the os os share market has fallen about 10% for the last 100 days so yeah. did he get panic and sell bora <laughs> No, nah, not really. Um, no, nah, no. Nah. But just following a few shares, some have come into you know ranges that you're kind of you want to get get yes. in by more. So um, that's the analysis that we're doing in the back end. <laughs> um, but markets, yeah, there has to. They've been a pretty good. The last two years have been pretty good in terms of. Uh, market gain so you know shares kind of rocketing um inflations are more upon us at the moment so yeah um, but that's for a different topic that's a different day i know this this, this yeah. is becoming a fine uh, <laughs> finance podcast not a cricket yeah podcast. Oh. cricket is giving financial advice no it is not advice please please yeah. don't you know this is just we are having a chat and just just a general chat <laughs> no advice yeah here. Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, you want me to take over the next? Yeah, question? yeah. This, yeah, we'll do another one. This is Nalaka from Colombo. Love listening to you guys. Given the fact that you both have played with MJ, um, I think you both are a bit biased towards him and his decisions. Am I right? So I'm um, guessing the reference MJ is Mahela Jawad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, interesting one. Uh, Straight away, talking it out, um, tend, tend to be biased. I think I, cert or I certainly am a bit, a bit biased towards some of the decisions he, um, he's making because I just played with him and uh, or more domestically, not a lot of games, but mm. having been around the circuit and seen and uh, some of the decisions he's been making, you tend to trust in him to make the right call. Um, so that's Absolutely. probably where our biasness is coming from. Um, also, this is a tough storm that he, they are, the guys are trying to weather out and you know bring about a change. So mm -hmm. um, he, he might not be 100% in his decisions, but you have the trust that it could turn out to be right. Um, but again, he, might, he probably makes mistakes as well. And... I mean, if he, it's a glaring mistake out there, we'll probably have a discussion around it. But mm. um, in respect to what he's done and what he's achieved and what he's capable of doing, that's that biasness that we are, I think, on, on to him with. Well, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm in the same boat, but I like, you know, it is, it sounds biased, but if you look at his track record as a captain and recently as a coach, you know, he has a good yeah. track record. So, you know, his performances, his um, his performances as a, as a batsman, as a captain, and the results he has shown us in the past and uh, and in currently as well. And um, so I back his judgment. Um, so I mean, it might sound yeah. a bit biased as well, but what I what I can ask from Nalik is, I mean, if not him, who? <laughs> That's all I can ask. Like you know, I think it's a fair assessment coming from guys uh, with a view. Maybe he's making decisions that you know are questionable. You tend to think, hang on, you could have thought it out differently. Hmm. But got to think from a wider range. I think this. He we talked about his leadership styles, his player coaching, whatnot that's been happening. You also got to understand he's also a successful entrepreneur uh, into some of the business ventures that he's going. So there are certain 
decisions that you have to make go that doesn't please everyone from organization point of view but yeah. you can't you always need a guy to make that decisions um yeah. you're going to have people who are unhappy but then it's made in an interest where you feel you can get get something beneficial for the setup which we've struggled for a while we've struggled for a very long time and some of the successes we had was when he was in a leadership position as a captain so yeah um, so there are a lot of benefits coming from that biasness is i mean <laughs> it's <laughs> it's an interesting one but again if um, we try to be not so much bias i think it think about it a bit different because it's good it's a good um feedback for us to start thinking you know um what can we do yeah you know? no no you're right yeah i think that's a good place to wrap up bora but keep sending these uh, comments and questions we love it there was a interesting one that one um, we haven't had a question like that hope um the listeners enjoy um what we discussed today and also with the australian t20 tour in mind some changes that hopefully will benefit the team um we'd love to hear more feedback again give us a like a rating helps you know gets us up the ranks we were at one stage at the top of the ranks i think we are still at the top you know um a top mark uh, number one probably yeah we are number one competing with a few other podcasters uh, which is good um and hopefully get exposed to have more good episodes yeah our email is relaxedpodcast at gmail.com and you can give us a follow in all our socials yeah tell a friend if you like this podcast your friends might like it too so thank you for listening we'll see you next time thanks everyone cheers bye bye